Fortunately, another more responsible robot named Optimum Prime is awake and attempting to defend the city. You can see that this teenage kid was about to fall to his death when Optimum Prime heroically caught him and is now scraping his hand into the wall in order to slow them down before impact. Also notice that this is occurring next to a speed limit sign that says 50 miles per hour. Anyway, the lines being scraped into the building represent linear esophageal ulcers, and the 50 miles per hour sign is our symbol for a CD4 count less than 50. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that there is an increased risk of linear esophageal ulcers in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50 cells per microliter. Optimum Prime is also fighting back with his high-tech laser eye weapons. These laser beams coming out of his eyes represent retinitis, and the fact that this is occurring next to the 50 mile per hour sign should help you remember that there is an increased risk of retinitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. This is a fundoscopy image of CMV retinitis. You can see areas of hemorrhage and white spots as well, which are sometimes referred to as cotton wool exudates. During this fierce engagement, you can see that the gutter below Optimum Prime has lit up in flames. The gutter is a symbol for the colon, and this is also occurring next to the 50 mile per hour sign. So together, these ideas should help you remember that there is an increased risk of colitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. Behind Optimum Prime, there is a fire hydrant that exploded as it came in contact with the fire. Now we can see water spraying all over this poor guy's head, which is our symbol for encephalitis. So there is an increased risk of encephalitis in HIV patients when the CD4 count is less than 50. Now you can see that we've added more to the scene, but let's zoom up so you can see this better. As you can see, Megatronics threw a huge axe at the ambulance, causing it to go up in flames. Fortunately, the sick person inside was brought out to the road on a stretcher, and the medic holding the transplant organs is safe as he rushes inside of the hospital. In any case, the axe resembles the lungs, and the transplant guy should make you think of transplant patients. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that CMV may cause pneumonitis in transplant patients. The guy in the stretcher is also here to reinforce the idea that many of the clinical features of CMV are manifested in immunocompromised patients, such as those with a low CD4 count or transplant patients. All right, now let's move on to discuss congenital CMV. 